going to do a video on building a gasifier stove. There's a lot of them on YouTube. I haven't seen one quite like this. I'm going to make this all out of stainless steel. I'm going to try to do this a quick video on just how I built this. It took me a long time to come up with trying to find the parts. A lot of hours spent at the hardware store, but I wanted to get this out and try to do it quick. Uh, this is everything you need right here. The hardest part, you don't you don't need that many tools. All you need is a drill and a hammer. You don't have to do any cutting. You just buy the parts, drill some holes, and put it together. It's pretty easy. Uh, we'll start with uh, these are utensil holders that you can get at a kitchen supply store like a kitchen outlet. I got these at, it's called Kitchen Collection. Um, it's heavy duty stainless steel. You might be able to get them at like Ikea. They're kind of hard to find, but you gotta get this size. This one's, it's got a five inch diameter top. And here's another, this is another one I bought at the same place. This one's about six inches tall, and this one's approximately seven inches tall. So you'll have an inch space when we put it in, like inside this other one. There are a lot of smaller ones. This will be a medium sized one. Um, like I said, it's made out of stainless steel, so it's going to last a long time. It won't rust, it's going to be durable. You can build I built this one for around $25. Uh, you could build it cheaper. You want the, the inside where your fire is going to be to be stainless steel. The outside you wouldn't have to. Um, I found that you could buy one of these paint cans right here, a cheap paint can for the outside. This will fit inside a paint can too if you wanted to do it a little cheaper with a paint can. But I'm using all stainless steel. So like I said, what we have is this one's about a seven inch diameter. You need a larger stainless steel container and a smaller one. So this one fits inside. Uh, the hole patterns on these vary. I'm gonna, I'll explain how I do my hole pattern. But you kind of have to experiment a little for the size and how many holes you want on the inside fire chamber. Another thing you're going to need is some stainless steel screws, machine screws. These are 1024 by an inch and a half long. And they're right here. I already have them installed. So you need the screws and the nuts. 1024. It's important that you get the smaller one and I'll show you why. So this this screw here, this big, if it's too big it won't set on top of this container real nice. And the screws get installed into this flange which you can buy it's in the plumbing section I think it's for a toilet but it's stainless steel and it's called a closet flange you can buy that in the plumbing section at your Lowe's now when you buy this this ridge around this whole flange is raised so when you get it, you're going to have to lay it flat down onto a piece of concrete and beat that down flat. And I'll show you why in a little bit here. Also, these where the screws go in, where all these, there's six screws, that's raised also. So you're going to have to beat them down flat. But what's nice about this, you don't have to cut your 
circle out and cutting stainless steel is pain in the butt. So you won't have to cut anything on this project, which is nice. The only thing you're going to have to do is drill a bunch of holes. And stainless steel is hard to drill, so you're going to need a good bit. I was using these DeWalt bits, and it's made for stainless steel. The whole project's like about around $25, not including the bits and all your tools you need, but it's pretty inexpensive. So you need a drill bit, of course you need a drill, a hammer, you're going to need a roll of masking tape. I use this about a three quarter inch wide masking tape just so I can put it around to drill my hole. I'll mark it out on a piece of tape. Here's my tape right here. I mark it out. My hole patterns are going to be one inch apart. So I make a mark one inch, wrap it around. I already drilled some eighth inch holes. It's easier to drill smaller holes first and then go with your bigger holes. I'm going to drill eighth inch and then go to probably like around a quarter inch. Now I'm going to do it and include it into this video and show you what I did. But this is how I'm going to do it with the, with the tape works easier with a piece of tape you can line it up closer so we have the containers we have the flange which goes on top of the larger container you're gonna need also I'm gonna use springs and I'll show you what I'm using those for later but these springs are 7 sixteenths by 5 inch. You guys might think of another way to do this. To, what I'm using them for is to hook around here one of these screws and to hold this top down later. I'll put it in a, one of the air holes that I'm going to drill through the bottom. One thing with this flange, <coughs> it does come with an opening right here that you want to close up. So what I found was a piece of aluminum. And I already installed, there's two of these openings. So I, as you can see, let's see if you can see it. I installed one over that opening because you want that to be sealed up with a small stainless steel screw. So what I did so far, as you can see, I installed the six screws into here, into the flange. I did drill, I put my tape around, it's a three quarter inch, so it's about three quarters of an inch. From the bottom up, I drilled some eighth inch holes, and they're one inch apart around the bottom, and about three quarters of an inch from the top, I drilled some eighth inch holes. I think I'm going to make these a quarter of an inch. Like I said, there's a lot of different sizes, but you just have to experiment. I'm going to do mine one quarter inch, top and bottom, one inch apart. Now some people, which I might do also, is drill quarter inch holes all the way through the bottom, a bunch of holes so the ashes fall through because this is going to be your fire chamber so I think I'm going to leave these an eighth of an inch because I really don't think you'll need you might not need any holes right here if you do the holes in the bottom and that's what I'm I think that's that is what I'm going to do I'm going to drill some quarter inch holes in the bottom but as you can see, this inside fire chamber, once you flatten out the underside of this, goes right through this flange and it fits perfect. Nice and snug, nice and tight. You want a tight seal around that. So 
that goes on top like that. And you pretty much can see how this is gonna go together. Because all I have to do is drill a bunch of holes and I'll do that now and show it to you. Two springs, one on each side, and that's gonna hold this top down. Simple, easy, we'll do this video and do it number one, try to keep it short, and I'll do a second video with some burn testing. Let's drill some holes. By the way, this does, this does come with the holes in it, the six holes for your screws here. So you don't have to drill those holes, which is nice, but is it, I got my tape around. You can see how I have it marked every inch. I'm gonna drill eighth inch holes just for my first hole, pilot hole. And I'm gonna drill it close to the top of this tape so it'll look nice and spaced about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Let's do that now. This will be the outer sleeve, the larger pot. You have to drill holes in the bottom. And these will be your primary, uh, primary air holes. You have to drill holes so the cool air can go in. There'll be a dead air space which heats up and that rises and goes in through the top holes of the inside chamber, the inside fire chamber. Let's drill the holes. Okay, as you can tell, I got my holes drilled one inch apart. I put them down just a hair lower, about in the center of the tape. I'll take the tape off and I'm gonna drill some quarter inch holes. Top and bottom, inside chamber and just the bottom of the outside chamber. Let's do it. It goes through pretty good. It only took me about five minutes to drill all these holes. If you have a really good bit, and I used eighth inch bit. Okay, I got all my holes drilled. Probably took me about 15 minutes. Got put all quarter inch holes in the inside chamber, top and bottom. Looks really nice. There's what it looks like. And then I used, uh, I put quarter inch, but it looked too small on the outside chamber. And I might have to make them bigger later, but I got three, I put a three eighths inch holes in here. I got 20 holes in this outside chamber and 15 holes top and bottom inside chamber. Let's put it together. I have one more thing to do. I'm gonna install a, another cover plate onto my flange here. Okay, there it is. I got my cover plates both on. Just use some stainless steel sheet metal screws. Let's put it together. I'll show you how easy this is. Goes inside. Goes like that. See how I, I don't know if you can see it, but I bent the spring over so I can hook it around one of these. There might be a better way to do this if someone figures it out, let me know, but then I'm gonna pull that down and just hook it right into the, to the bottom hole. Just like that, one on that side, and I'll put one on this side. There it is. There's your stove. Simple, easy. This is video one. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll do a video two on some experimentation with this. Thanks for watching.